everyone. So today we're going to talk about another extension to metabolism. Today's all about fatty acid oxidation and some of the actions of the liver. But you have to remember, when we were talking about glycolysis and how that feeds into the Krebs cycle and then down the road to oxidative phosphorylation, this is when the body has sugar to break down and we have high blood glucose. But what happens when we have a low blood glucose and the body needs energy? low blood glucose, we're actually going to have a hormonal response to glucagon. This is going to lower glycolysis and lower glycogen synthesis and amp up gluconeogenesis and glycogen breakdown. Remember, gluconeogenesis provided a way for us to create glucose out of non-carbohydrate intermediates like pyruvate. Now, I know we haven't done a lot of talking about glycogen, but just think about it as a short-term need for glucose. So glycogen is a way for us to store glucose that allows us to immediately get it back in organs like the muscle and the liver. And when we have gluconeogenesis, we have to remember that it is energy expensing. We have to use ATP to get back to glucose. So between glycogen and gluconeogenesis, we're not doing a really good job at sufficiently building enough glucose to respond to the fact that we had a low blood glucose. This is when we actually have the conversation about fatty acid oxidation in the liver. When the glycogen storage in the liver goes around 20%, this is when the liver is going to start activating to break down fatty acids and triglycerides into energy form. The beautiful thing about fatty acids when thinking about energy compared to glucose is that the fatty acids are more reduced than glucose. So they have more potential for more energy output. So we can acknowledge the power or the energy that comes from fatty acids, but how are they stored? They're actually stored through phosphodiester bonds to glycerol to form triglycerides. When we get that hormonal response that we have low blood glucose and that a lot of our glycogen storage is used up, this is gonna trigger specific enzymes to break down triglycerides. Glycerides are broken down to glycerol and free-floating fatty acids by lipoprotein lipases. These will go ahead and cleave those phosphodiester bonds on glycerol. The majority of energy from triglyceride breakdown does come from the fatty acids, but the body can break down the glycerol molecules from process working with two different enzymes, glycerol kinase and glycerol 3-phosphate dehydrogenase. This would take glycerol all the way to dihydroxyacetone phosphate, which would then enter glycolysis. Now that we've broken down the glycerol molecules, now we're going to start thinking about the fatty acids. Now the interesting thing about fatty acid breakdown is that we first have to activate it. This helps us get it inside the mitochondria, because the long fatty acid chains have a trouble when going inside the mitochondria. The first subset of reactions all about fatty acid oxidation is going to be revolved around activating the fatty acid so we can get it inside the mitochondria. The first main reaction here is binding the fatty acid to fatty acetyl-CoA synthase. And once it's bound, then we can react it with acetyl-CoA to give us our fatty acetyl-CoA. The driving force for this reaction that makes it so favorable is that we're not doing a phosphorylation, we're doing an adenylation. This is when the fatty acid reacts with ATP to then kick off pyrophosphate. Pyrophosphate would then react with pyrophosphatase to release two inorganic phosphates. That is the driving force for making this reaction so thermodynamically favorable. We have activated our fatty acid to a fatty acetyl-CoA. We can now enter the carnitine shuttle. The carnitine shuttle is going to help us take the fatty acid from the cytoplasm into the matrix of the mitochondria. Now, scientists are not sure whether or not this first step of the reaction happens in the cytoplasm or in the inner membrane space. But the first reaction revolves around the reaction of our fatty acetyl-CoA with carnitine transferase. For the reaction with the transferase, then this intermediate acetylcarnitine can transfer through the carnitine intermembrane space transporter. This allows us to have our intermediate in the matrix of the mitochondria. Then, within the mitochondria, it's going to react again with another carnitine transferase. This is going to have the reverse reaction now and give us back our fatty acetyl-CoA. Carnitine is then going to go back up throughout the process the cytoplasm to continue the shuttle. Now that we're inside the mitochondria, we can begin the cyclic process of fatty acid oxidation that helps us feed into the Krebs cycle. In order to really understand what is going on, we're going to focus on an example. In this example, we're going to focus on a fatty acetyl-CoA with a 16 carbon chain. 
Our first reaction in this process is going to be taking our fatty acetyl CoA and reacting it with acetyl CoA dehydrogenase, which is an oxidation. This is going to put a trans double bond on the alpha beta carbons of our fatty acetyl CoA. Next reaction is going to be with a hydratase. This is going to introduce water to our trans double bond, putting a hydroxyl group on the beta carbon. Introducing a hydroxyl group, we're going to do yet again another oxidation reaction with a new enzyme. This enzyme is also a dehydrogenase. This is going to take our hydroxyl group into a ketone group. Our final reaction is going to be a reaction with thiolase. This takes our now beta keto acetyl CoA and reacts it with acetyl CoA again to make a thioester that's two carbon shorter and acetyl CoA. Acetyl CoA, which we know that can enter inside the Krebs cycle. It's really important for you to memorize that oxidation, hydration, oxidation, and cleavage steps because that's going to continue happening until our 16 carbon chain is broken down into two acetyl CoA bits. And after doing a total of seven rounds, since the last round is going to give us two acetyl CoA molecules from breaking a four fatty acetyl CoA, this is going to give us a 108 ATP. This is an intense amount of energy. This is why these triglycerides and fatty acids are such a good reliable source during times of fasting or not eating. You notice with our first example, we had an even number of carbons on our fatty acid. What happens when there's an odd number? Well, the process is gonna happen again, that four step process that breaks it down to acetylcholate. But at the end, we're gonna be left with a three carbon chain fatty acid. Now, what happens this, in this step is a little different. Three different enzymes take place. We have a carboxylase, we have an epimerization, and then we have a mutase. This takes our three carbon propanyl CoA all the way down to succinyl CoA, which we know can enter the Krebs cycle. But this process is a little bit more energy needing since it uses ATP in the first step and doesn't provide as much energy. We've officially broken down how fatty acid oxidation works. Now, fatty acid oxidation happens in high demanding organs like the liver, heart, and muscles. But it doesn't happen in the brain. The brain actually can only get energy from glucose and ketone bodies. So I just want to say thank you to the artist Vivian Miaovin on Instagram for helping me create the liver. I really suck at drawing anything that isn't molecules or biochemistry related. So thank you so much. And you guys should go check out her cool art. Also, I just want to say that this entire video was planned out using the Neo Spark Pen. The Neo Spark Pen is a really cool invention that allows you to take traditional notes with a recorder and your pen and it automatically transfers to your iPad or device. Now on top of that, let's say you're in class and you want to record the lecture. The Neo Smart Pen actually connects with the recorder that allows you to click at certain points in your notes and re-listen to just that specific point in the lecture. So I just want to say thank you for the company for sending me these amazing products that I've used to plan for this lesson. They also have these amazing digital notebooks that they sent me that I got to try out and I love the paper and the way that the notebooks are binded. And if you guys want to learn anything more about this awesome startup company, I'm putting a link in my description all about it. I also just wanted to say, take this time and say thank you. Um, you guys have given me so much support and motivation to continue creating. Um, but I just wanted to say that I do have some avenues if you want to support and help me continue creating, I have a Patreon where I allow um, a Patreon-only Discord community, um, and some tiers allow for monthly shoutouts. I have a Ko-fi account if you want to do a one-time donation and some commissions. Um, sharing any of my content really helps, and I also have a merchandise store where I'm selling some shirts, oversized sweaters, posters, and I'm currently working on my first book covering all of glycolysis with my proteins and infographics so thank you so much and i hope you guys have a great day